Right, I'll see you in there, Cots. See you in there. Yeah, yeah. Pizza box tonight. Love that. Excuse me, Carly. Right, open up and uh. Seems quite religious. Oh, fucking am here. All right, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for coming along. Evening. Not see up there. Um, it's really nice to see so many numbers in here. So thank you for taking the time out. Um, it is the first Sunday of 2024. Um, and with that in mind, I know everyone will be kind of getting back into our normal set of grooves, maybe starting some New Year's resolutions. Um, but I really hope that the... Sorry, say that again? Can't hear you. Are you shouting? Yeah, I'm oh, shouting. I'm maybe want to come a wee bit closer. I'll stand here. A little bit better. Little okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm sure you'd settle by. Well, mm. as I was saying, I just kind of hope the time off work mm. and at school or whatever it was that you had off was beneficial to you. Um, and let's pray that 2024 is a year for everyone to remember. Um, for anyone new to the city or indeed church here, um, a special warm welcome to you. You'll find we are a friendly Thank city you. and a friendly congregation. And should you need any help or support, just grab someone afterwards and they'll happily help you out. Um, tonight we have some announcements. Um, so this Friday coming, um, that's the 12th of January, there's going to be a go-kart championship. Um, that's going to be held at the racing track at uh, Postal 433. Now the event will start at 8 o'clock and there will be prizes for first place, second place and third place. So good luck everyone and get practising. Uh, there are still two businesses available for purchase within the city. Um, those are the candy shop and the ice cream parlour. Um, if anyone is interested in running their own business, um, then simply open a golden and one of the staff will discuss that with you further. Um, lastly, um, as everyone probably is aware, there's a big recruitment drive in the city. Um, PD, NHS and GNC Customs are all recruiting. Um, all offer great rates of pay. Um, all offer a great way to get to know the city and those in it um, oh, and have lots of fun along the way. So if you're interested, either make an application on the emails or just nip into one of those locations and ask for an interview um, and someone should hopefully be able to do that for you. Um, now, before we kind of get started, I'll just ask that we just bow our head in a moment of prayer. Um, so, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing your people into church this evening and blessing us with this amazing building and this wonderful city. I want to pray over everyone who calls Manchester home. I pray you bless them with good health, for prosperity at work and home, and that you give them your blessed peace. As we prepare to open your word, Lord, I pray your spirit is with us and it gives us ear to hear, ears to hear and wisdom to understand. And I pray it all in your heavenly name. Now, since we are at the beginning of a new year, um, I'd like to speak on something that's quite, I think is quite important, and that's on the subject of hope. Um, I want to look at where hope comes from, what it is and how powerful it can be. Um, to me, when I look at the news, I look at social media, or even just from conversations walking around town, uh, I feel like we've lost that which is most important to humanity, which is hope. Uh, here are the terrible things people do, mostly to themselves, because they feel hopeless, and it is really sad. You see, you, me, and every person around the world was left the ultimate message of hope, and regardless of circumstance, we need to remember that. As I've already discussed with you, my second job involves helping a lot of people who have lost all hope. They might fall into addiction, they might something they might use to, to kind of feel numb or happy for a short while. They might be homeless, they might feel that weight of hopelessness can be very heavy indeed. But for each of them too, there is real hope in our Lord and Saviour. Now I want to bear that in mind as we start our first hymn of the evening. If you'd like to stand with me and we'll sing along to a hymn called Cornerstone. Hang on, sorry, my mouse scope. There we go.
All right, just have a wee seat. Ignore the fact I'm floating. <laughs> so the message I want to look at today is contained in Matthew chapter 28. And there it shows that there was two women, uh, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, likely his mother, going to the tomb where he was laid down. On their way there, an angel appears, rolls back the stone, barring entry, and tells them he's no longer there, he is risen, and that they should go and have a look for themselves. Now, the, resur the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a story of triumph of good over evil. It's a story of Christ's victory over death. The resurrection is also a story of a Redeemer's vindication over his tormentors who subjected him to the brutality of crucifixion. But most of all, the resurrection is a story of hope for humanity on a hopeless day. Our world is filled with hopelessness and hopeless individuals. People display hopelessness in various ways. There are sensitive subjects to delve into, but we know what I mean when I say that they do the worst to themselves when so lost. As I've touched on previously, we have seen so many people facing homelessness across the country, many of whom have done nothing wrong or caused it by themselves. We're entering a period of economic adversity. Commenters call it a cost of living crisis. Many are forced to choose between eating or turning their heating on. Doom and gloom economists and social commenters alike think the economy will collapse completely and become a struggling poverty-stricken nation. Unemployment rates are on the rise, crime statistics too are on the rise, and it's pushing many into a state of despair. But however, some people are pulling together, charities are stepping up, and we are trying to help our fellow man stand on their feet. In that, I see glimmers of hope. Sometimes all we need in life's dilemmas is just a little bit of hope. Sometimes when the tunnel is dark, all we need is just a little bit of hope. Sometimes when troubles are lasting too long, all we need is just a little bit of hope. When the road is rocky and the way is dreary, we just need a little bit of hope. Sometimes when the bills are high and the paycheck is low, all we need is just a little bit of hope. And sometimes when the job is gone and the rent or mortgage due date is passed, we just need that little bit of hope. Sometimes when there is a lot of sorrow and it looks like there will be no tomorrow, we just need that little bit of hope. Sometimes when it looks like you're not going to make it and you truly feel that you can't take it, all you need is a little bit of hope. Sometimes when you're doing your best and you're still failing the test, all you need is a little bit of hope. Sometimes you're crying and sometimes you feel like dying, all you need is a little bit of hope. Sometimes you feel that you've come to the end of your rope and you don't know how to cope, what you need is to tie a knot and hang on and just have a little bit of hope. Hope does not back up, no. Hope does not back down, no. Hope does not back out, hope does not back in, hope does not bow out, hope does not cave in, hope does not drop out, hope does not run out, hope does not give in, hope does not give out, hope does not give up, no, no, no. But hope looks up. Hope stands up, buckles up, suits up, shapes up, warms up and rises up. Hope believes there's a sun even when it's not shining. Hope believes in love even when you don't feel it. Hope believes in God even when he's silent. Hope sees the invisible, the incredible, the unapproachable, the unbearable, the unendurable. Hope beats the unbeatable and hope defeats the undefeatable. I was looking at US state mottos kind of strange thing to look at I know but there are quite a few that are quite fascinating but there's one that I exceptionally like above all else there's one from Massachusetts that states seeking peace under liberty by using the sword Georgia state motto is of wisdom justice and moderation California's motto is Eureka or I have found it and New York's motto is Excelsior or higher 
but there's a state called Rhode Island, and their motto is my favourite. Their motto is simply hope. Because of that, I started looking into stories of hope that might have been found in that particular state. Um, there's quite a few, to be honest, um, but there's one that I exceptionally liked. Um, and that's back in 1999, there was a high-rise building in a place called the Hartford Projects. Um, now, the city tried to demolish that building. Police cordoned off several blocks around it. Demolition crews and cranes and tractors were deployed in the area. They planted dynamite in the building and experts exploded their charges. But the building would not come down. Explosion after explosion after explosion was made. But the building just would not come down. Finally, the demolition team packed up and walked away. And believe it or not, in 2024, today, that building is still standing. You see, hope cannot de be defeated. Hope is like that building. It says, do what you want, but I am not moving. It says, throw everything you have at me, but I am not going to shake. Bring in your expert destroyers and I will be here long after you're gone. Just like a tree planted by the levels of water, I shall not be moved. Say it with me, guys. Hope, hope, hope. Now, hope is a lame man who was on his way to see Jesus. And on his way, he said to his friends, when I come back, we're going to go for a walk. Hope is a blind man who was going to meet Jesus and told his family, I'm going to come back. And when I come back, I'm going to see you. Hope is a deaf man. Before leaving home, he used sign language to tell his mum, I'm going to see Jesus when I come back. I'm going to talk to you. Stories of hope fill the pages of the Bible. But the greatest one is found in our text today. He's not here, for he is risen. All of human history culminated at that place called Calvary. The entire universe focused its attention on that tiny place of ground near a small hill shaped as a skull outside the walls of Jerusalem. Roman soldiers were driving nails into the hands and feet of a man called Jesus of Nazareth. Every blow that hammered struck on the nails registered across the expanse of the universe and ricocheted in heaven. God the Father watched as his only begotten son was executed by sinful men. Jesus himself could have stopped the executioners. God the Father could have done just the same. But instead he allowed it. He allowed it, sorry. Greater love hath no man this than a man lay down his life for his friends. Then the soldiers hoisted him up on a cross. And there on that cross was the sinless son of God. Just dying for the unjust that he might bring us back to him. Paul the Apostle wrote, For he hath made him to be sin for us, he who knew no sin, that we might be made righteous of, in God in him. The prophet Isaiah declared, He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our inequities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We are like sheep who have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. People were coming by and they were mocking him, saying, Come down, if you're the son of God, you can just walk down from the cross. Jesus cried, I thirst, and instead of giving them water, they gave him vinegar to drink. But that day, Jesus prayed for his, tormon for his tormentor, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. His mother, standing there, had lost all hope as she saw her son brutally killed. His close friend John had lost hope as he watched Jesus agonise when he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? His disciples ran away and hid in a closed room in the city. They lost all hope as their plans for greatness and the liberation of Israel through Jesus seemed like bad dreams. Darkness covered the earth. The curtain of the temple ripped open from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split and Jesus cried out, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and died. He was dead and all hope was gone. Soldiers pushed a spear into his side and blood and water flowed out. Then he took his beaten, bruised, bleeding, butchered body down from the cross and placed it in a borrowed tomb. The Romans sealed the tomb and the Jews posted guards at the grave. One day passed and nothing happened. Two days went by and the shock and horror still was not wearing off. Then on the third day, when the hope of all humanity seemed to be completely shattered, humankind was resigned to the shackles of despair. But early in the morning... On the first day of the week, hope began to stir in the regions of the dead. Hope opened his eyes. Hope lifted his arms. Hope shifted his legs. Hope stood up and walked away from the tomb. Many things speak of hope, but on the first Easter morning, the embodiment of hope busted out of the prison of death and proved once and for all to all of Adam's fallen race that he is the true hope. He is the hope of humanity. 
and he is alive. You ask me how I know he's alive? Because he lives within my heart. He lives within you and he lives within me and as long as he's living in you, you should have hope. Don't throw in the towel, don't give up, don't pack up, don't back down. Now I found another story when I was researching for tonight and I thought it was probably a nicer way to end our service than what we've been discussing. It's an old story from Italy. So once upon a time in a, an Italian, a small Italian town, a daughter was complaining to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it better. She was tired of fighting and struggling all the time. It seemed like life was one problem after the next. The next day, her father, who was a chef, took her into the kitchen and he filled three pots with water and placed each on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he placed potatoes in one pot, he placed eggs in another pot, and then he ladled um, coffee grinds into another. He set them all and let them boil without saying a word to his daughter. Now his daughter moaned impatiently, um, but she waited, wondering what on earth he was doing. After 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes out of the pot and placed them in a bowl, the eggs the same, and then he ladled the coffee out into a cup. Turning to his daughter, he said, what do you see? And she said, eggs, potato and coffee. He said, look closer and touch the potatoes. So she did and noticed that they were soft. He asked her to take an egg and break it, pulling off the shell, and she observed that they hard boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee I'll hang fire. My bad, sorry. Sorry. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. So she said, Father, what does this mean? And he explained that the potatoes, the eggs and the coffee beans had each faced the same adversity. The boiling water. However, each one reacted completely differently. The potato went in strong, hard and unrelenting. And the boiling water made it soft and weak. The egg was fragile with only the thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior, but once placed in the boiling water, the inside of the egg became hard and strong. However, the, qu the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water themselves. They created something wonderful and new. And then the father asked his daughter, which one of these are you? When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? Now for me, what I take from that is that our mindset and our will will cause how we react to trials, tests and difficulties. But just know that those will pass and know that and have hope in your heart and all will be well. I bless you all. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for a new year. A year untouched and we can fill it with our hopes for whatever our heart wishes. Be that new beginnings, completing what we have started, or just turning over a new leaf. I pray all of us see many, many more years to come. And I pray that we all have a never-ending supply of hope in our hearts and that life will treat us well. I pray that as we leave here this evening, we will go home happy and with joy. I pray for the safety of our community and pray blessings over every one of us here and everyone that calls Manchester home. And I pray that we can all be the coffee bean whenever we hit that boiling water. And I pray all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So thank you, guys. Amen. Um, Amen. As you know, we like to close Amen. service by coming up to the front, and we'll have our minute salute to the fallen, and then we'll have their song that we always play at the end, too. Yo, up. Uh Got one over here. Oh, then she's gonna keep going. She's gone.
Big up, Pastor Jimmy. Cheers, man. Thank you, everybody, for coming along. I hope the service was good for you. Um, feel free to stand around and mingle. Right? Feeling that, then have a blessed week, and I pray for you all. Good night, guys. Good night, man. Sorry about me phone Cheers, going off as well. Up. Cheers, man. Father. Yeah, man. Right now, I ask for forgiveness. You're forgiven, brother. Because for what I'm about to do. Which is? I was hurt in so many ways that I don't see there's another way for me to forgive the person that hurted me. Okay. And I know you said without without hope, to me, without hope, there's always doubt. Right. And and the doubt is, is the one thing that's... It, that's that's eluding me. Okay, um, okay. I, I I'm only asking. Um, I'm you know I've got no one else. To, well, I've got my family to talk to, but we'll talk to you, Father. Um, yep. So just I I don't know. Um, wait, well, I'm giving my contact details. You, you want to go and grab a coffee? Can grab a coffee. That's we can a... grab a coffee. Um, if you're about later, do you want to go straight after this? I'll go and get changed. We can we can go now. Yeah, let's do that. Let's have a wee chat. Uh, I'm just feeling very uh, revengeful. Okay.
Well, that's not a, a good place to be, and you obviously know that. That's why you're talking to me. So, push this up. No worries. Yeah, um, let, let's, let's let the let boys and girls, boys and call, girls up. call up. We'll, we'll go for a drive. drive. We'll have a chat. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm feeling very, uh, re you know, revengeful. Yeah. No, you can do everything. Then I have to turn it off. Yeah. So. Um, if you open your radio up, you'll see yeah. on the right hand side there's a red button. Ah. Oh. Got ya. Let's see. Done. Um. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go for a drive. Okay. A lovely service, by the way. Thank um, you. It made me try to open up to certain members. I uh, lost my niece and nephew. Um, oh. In the last Thanks, guys. two years. So. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank Boys, I need to go and do something. I'll see you in a bit, okay? Yeah, yeah, I know, mate. Follow me.